Hello everybody, this is Dr. Rajal Shah from UT Southwestern Medical Center. In this video, I would like to take an opportunity to discuss with you an unusual renal cell carcinoma entity which has also been referred to as a renal cell carcinoma with leiomyometastroma. We recently published a major series on this particular uh, tumor entity. So I will try to provide you some of the conceptual clarifications regarding the confusing aspects of this particular tumor entity. I will talk about the diagnostic approach and we'll also discuss how to distinguish it from some of its close uh, mimics. So with improved understanding in the molecular biology of renal cell carcinoma, we have recently witnessed an explosion of new tumor entities. Many of these entities which are shown here in these different boxes, I have already found a place in 2016 WHO Blue Book. But many tumor entities are still considered as an emerging or provisional tumor entities. And RCC with leiomyometastroma and TCEB1 mutated renal cell carcinoma, which I will show you they are highly related entities are included within this uh, provisional or emerging tumor entities. So one very confusing aspect about uh, this particular entity, which uh, here onwards I will refer to as with an abbreviation of RCC LMS, is that variety of terminologies have been utilized in literature to describe these tumors. Some of notable examples include clear cell RCC with smooth muscle stroma, RCC with clear cells, smooth muscle stroma and negativity for 3P deletion, RCC with leiomyometastroma, renal adenomyometas tumor also referred to commonly as a rat, TCEB1 mutated renal cell carcinoma and unclassified renal cell carcinoma with tubulopapillary architecture, clear cell phenotype and chromosome 8 monosomy. So one very important question that comes to mind is that is this really a distinct tumor entity or a variety of renal tumor entities which are presenting with the same or similar morphology. Recently two major series of hereditary tuberous sclerosis associated renal cell carcinoma were published by Guo et al and Young et al. They described a subset of this renal cell carcinomas occurring within this hereditary setting having tumor morphology it's very similar to RCC LMS. These tumors in Guo et al were discussed as a rat-like and Yang et al referred to as a TSC associated papillary renal cell carcinoma. Recently Hakimi et al discussed or described a subset of sporadic renal cell carcinomas uh, with a somewhat very similar morphology like RCC LMS having a hotspots TCEB1 mutation which is now also referred to with a new name gene ALOC. So I will be referring both of these interchangeably. So the next important question is that what is the relationship of RCC LMS to similar rat-like or TSC associated papillary like TSC RCCs and TCEB1 mutated RCC. So to explain or to kind of investigate these two particular questions, uh, we interrogated 23 sporadic renal cell carcinomas with smooth muscle stroma and classified them blindly into two groups, RCC LMS and clear cell RCC independent of molecular results. The classification of a case as RCC LMS was based on morphological comparison with phi index renal cell carcinomas from three patients with TSC showing rat-like morphology and the presence of diffuse CK7 expression. So we consider diffuse CK7 expression as an inclusion criteria for this particular tumor entity. So let me show you some of the characteristic macroscopical and microscopical features. Macroscopically, these tumors are typically small. Average tumor size was 2.3 centimeter. 
they predominantly were tan red solitary and solid microscopically low power often shows distinct tumor nodules separated by variable smooth muscle stroma if we look at those tumor nodules little bit closely you will find uh, presence of distinct elongated tubules which often have branching character and most importantly these tubules are lined by abundant or voluminous clear to occasionally mildly eosinophilic cytoplasm this is in our opinion is the most definitional feature of rcc lms these tumors also demonstrated focally prominent papillary morphology in many cases and often had a biphasic uh, collapsed sini surrounded by tubules with voluminous clear cytoplasm very interestingly the stroma can be quite variable in this particular tumors here is an example of stroma rich rcc lms while here is an example of stroma poor rcc lms so in our opinion stroma is not the definitional character of the tumor it is the epithelium uh, care features or epithelial characteristics are the definitional features of this particular tumor here is another example showing again nice feature of voluminous clear to mildly eosinophilic cytoplasm and presence of diffuse ck7 expression so he, this particular slide summarizes some of the definitional morphological features which you want to keep in mind these are not obvious but definitely very important features and even though they appear subtle when you apply that along with the diffuse ck7 expression pattern it often leads you towards a correct diagnosis elongated frequently branching tubules voluminous clear to mildly eosinophilic cytoplasm variable smooth muscle stroma variable papillary architecture foci of collapsed sini and diffuse ck7 positivity this table shows you the results of next generation sequencing which were performed on total 19 cases all 14 cases which were classified as an rcc lms demonstrated recurrent mutations in tsc or tsc2 mtor and or alloc gene mutations again alloc is previously referred to as a tceb1 mutation so in our opinion uh, this uh, tceb1 mutated rccs are within the family of renal cell carcinoma with leiomyometastroma Interestingly two RCC LMS with confirmed monosomy 8 one case demonstrated hot spot alloc mutation and one demonstrated three base pair previously undescribed in frame alloc deletion with truncating TSC1 mutation all 14 RCC LMS lacked VHL mutations while five cases which were classified as a clear cell RCC had VHL mutations so in our experience we were very successfully able to classify these tumors based on this subtle but important morphological features which i discuss and based on presence of diffuse seven expression next important sets of question which already i try to answer is that can morphological spectrum seen in tsc associated rccs can occur in sporadic setting and if so will this sporadic tsc rcc like tumors harbor somatic mutations in tsc genes and answer to both questions is yes this table shows you the breakdown of these three rcc categories which are found in hereditary tuberous sclerosis associated complex these entities have been or this morphological spectrum have been referred to as a rat like or tsc associated papillary chromophobe like and then the third is granular eosinophilic or macrocystic renal cell carcinoma and now it has been shown that all of these three morphological entities has a sporadic counterpart we showed in this paper that rcc with leiomyometastroma is essentially a sporadic counterpart of rat like or tsc associated papillary rcc 
RCC with eosinophilic and vacuolated cytoplasm which has also been referred to as a high grade oncocytic tumor or hot tumor is essentially a sporadic counterpart of chromophobe like RCC and then finally it has been clearly shown that now eosinophilic solid and cystic RCC which is also referred to as an ESC are essentially a solitary or sporadic counterpart of granular eosinophilic or macrocystic RCC uh, seen within the spectrum of TSC associated RCCs and the somatic mutations further solidify this particular concept. In our experience, these tumors are biologically indolent, but I have to emphasize that we had a relatively limited follow-up of these tumors with a median or average follow-up of 25 months. All these patients were alive with no evidence of disease. All about 11 patients with available follow-up had a stage T1A and majority of them, about 80% of them had a I sub WHO grade 2 nucleoli. So next very important point is about the differential diagnosis. So RCC LMS can very, very easily mimic clear cell renal cell carcinoma as well as clear cell papillary RCC. So these two are very, very important entities to consider in the differential diagnosis when you deal with this type of morphological entity. But again, I would like to emphasize that even though the similarities between these three tumors is quite a lot, but if you pay attention to subtle morphological pattern and its CK7 expression pattern, most of the time you should be able to correctly classify this tumor. And that's what I will try to kind of show you here. So let's go talk about some of the morphologic clues to the diagnosis. So our morphologic clue number one for the clear cell tumors is that when you see the presence of at least focally prominently displayed SNI with delicate intricately branching vasculature which has also been referred to as a racemose vasculature when you see that within a tumor it usually supports the diagnosis of clear cell renal cell carcinoma and typically you see this type of uh, feature in low grade areas so extensive sampling is a key to the diagnosis of clear cell renal cell carcinoma so here is a one such example where you see relatively very clear looking tumor showing prominent nodules separated by uh, quite prominent smooth muscle stroma but in some other well differentiated areas i could find areas showing this delicate intricately branching vasculature. So my diagnosis for this case is clear cell RCC and this is regardless of the CK7 expression pattern. Morphologic clue number two, look for predominant architectural features within a lesion. And this particular feature can help you very much within the distinction of clear cell papillary RCC from RCC LMS as both of them are characterized by diffuse CK7 expression. So immunohistochemistry is likely not going to help you distinguish between the two entities. Now, noticeably, you can see here that RCC LMS has a much more voluminous cytoplasm, while clear cell papillary RCC often have a scanned cytoplasm, and that is one of the most important helpful feature, in my opinion. The tubules are elongated, but they are typically short and they show more sawtooth type of branching pattern like shown here. And cells have often apocrine snouts, which are typically not seen in this type of features, not seen in RCC LMS. Another very helpful feature when prominently displayed within clear cell RCC is the presence of nuclei which polarize away from the basement membrane. But I would like to caution you that in our experience, focally these type of features can be seen within clear cell RCC as well as RCC LMS. So really you need to have this particular feature very prominently displayed to make meaningful conclusion regarding it. The sawtooth branching architecture of clear cell papillary RCC has also been referred to as a shark smile as seen in this particular cartoon. 
Next, let's talk, of, talk about the immunohistochemical markers. So I typically use CK7, CA9, and CD10 in my panel when I deal with these three particular entities in differential diagnosis. I would like to caution you one more time here that even though immunohistochemistry can be helpful, don't overtly rely on that except that you do want to have diffuse CK7 expression pattern both when you are considering RCC with lyomyometastoma and clear cell papillary RCC. Even though we consider diffuse CK7 expression as an unusual feature of clear cell RCC, in my experience, CK7 can be quite heterogeneously expressed within clear cell RCC. Some rare examples can have diffuse CK7 expression. So even though this diffuse CK7 is a definitional feature of these two entities, it is not entirely helpful when you have a uh, somewhat overlapping staining pattern. CN9 is typically diffusely expressed in clear cell RCCs because they are hypoxic tumors. But in our experience, both of these entities can also show you significant CN9 expression pattern. In famously, uh, the CN9 expression in clear cell papillary RCC has been referred to as a cup-like, but in 50% of RCC LMS cases expressing CN9, we also observed cup-like expression pattern. So again, immunohistochemistry has a very limited role in when you deal with a very uh, close calls. So in that case, is both morphology and immunohistochemistry is what something you should combine to make a diagnosis. Don't overtly rely on one particular feature. And typically clear cell papillary RCCs have shown to have CD10 negativity, while in our experience RCC LMS were typically diffusely positive with CD10. This particular wind diagram, which I have included from the, uh, my paper, our paper, and that shows you Again, the similarities and important differential diagnostic features of these three particular entities which I discussed today. Uh, so with that note, to summarize, RCC LMS harbors recurrent mutations of TSC1, TSC2, mTOR, and or ALOC, which has also been referred to as a TCEB1, consistent with hyperactive mTOR complex. So in our opinion, TCEB1 mutated for RCCs are a related family of tumors. RCC LMS likely represents the sporadic counterpart to morphologically identical tumors occurring in TSC patients. That's a very important point that came out of this particular paper. And in our opinion, RCC LMS is a novel subtype of renal cell carcinoma with unique morphological, immunohistochemical, and molecular characteristics that is distinct from clear cell and clear cell papillary RCC. I would like to thank all my collaborators and contributors of this study. So with that note, I thank you for your attention. If you like this particular presentation, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. That will certainly help me making new videos. So thank you. Very